Shalom, dear friends. What was the core and the center of the preaching of the early Christianity? The resurrection of Jesus. That God has raised Jesus from the dead. How did it take place? The manner and the circumstance of his resurrection is not described in the earliest preaching. At the beginning of chapter 28, we are once again introduced to those two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, who were present at the crucifixion of Jesus and later at the burial and now on Sunday early morning they come to the tomb. There is a great earthquake. You remember? At the death of Jesus there was this earthquake. The death and resurrection of Jesus are two sides of the same reality. Beginning of a new age. We know from the Old Testament the earthquake represents the presence of God and a new beginning. The power of God reverberates the whole cosmos. There is a descent of the angel the opening chapter of Matthew, we saw the angel coming to Joseph to give the divine interpretation of the puzzling events surrounding the birth of Jesus. Similarly, here we have this angel communicating the extraordinary aftermath of the resurrection of Jesus. We find an irony. The guards who were supposed to secure the body of Jesus are now appearing as though they themselves are dead. In chapter 27, the guards who were at the cross of Christ saw the earthquake and they believed. And here in chapter 28, the guards are shaken by the earthquake and they are unbelievers and they become like dead people. And the message of the angel to the women, do not be afraid, Jesus is risen from the dead. He has been raised, it is used in the passive voice that God has raised Jesus Christ and he gives the message, go and tell the disciples that he has risen as he has said. Six times in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus has predicted about his resurrection. And they have to meet him. The disciples have to meet him in Galilee. Why Galilee? Jesus began his ministry in Galilee. He called his disciples in Galilee. He trained them and he sent them out. On a mission in Galilee. Now, after the resurrection, Jesus renews the mission and they have to come back to the place where it all began. Verses 9 and 10 are unique to Matthew. The women are given the vision of Jesus, the presence of Jesus. And the women seize the feet of Jesus. There is an extraordinary truth. The risen body of Jesus is the real body of Jesus. It is tangible. Jesus is not a ghost. He is not a memory. He is real Jesus. He can be touched. And the other idea that Jesus communicates. Jesus says, Go and tell my brothers. During the lifetime, Jesus called the disciples as brothers because they were doing the will of the Father. 
later during the passion they showed that they are not his brothers by abandoning him now jesus is restoring them back calling them as my brothers and the gesture of the women we are familiar with the vocabulary prosquineo they prostrated themselves they adored they worshiped the gesture of recognizing jesus as a divine person and here we have something very important these women are the first apostle that's why mary magdalene is called apostala apostolorum apostle to the apostle she is given the mandate to communicate this message of the resurrection to the disciples we are told about the false teaching spread by the guards at the instance of the chief priest the second chapter at the infancy narrative herod calls together the chief priest and the scribes at the birth of jesus and he finds a military solution and here the chief priests are bribing the soldiers to communicate a lie money bribe is a favorite problem solver and we are told that this lie is propagated till the gospel was written that's why matthew says to this day now this false teaching is in opposition to the true teaching that jesus communicates at the end of the gospel the final paragraph is unique to matthew and this is the key to understanding the entire gospel extraordinarily rich statement that speaks about christ the church salvation history baptism jewish past and the gentile future during the public ministry jesus sent them to the land of israel and to the people of israel now the risen savior sends the disciples out to the whole world everyone is part of the universal mission of jesus the right of initiation into the community of jesus is no more circumcision it is the baptism and his command and not the mosaic law is the norm of morality for his community and we are told he called together the 11 a sad reminder of the fate of judas this is the only time in the gospel according to matthew we hear of the 11 we always heard of the 12 and the choice of the mountain in galilee not arbitrary not by chance remember sermon on the mount mountain of transfiguration mount of olives mount of golgotha and here the last mission is entrusted on a mountain mountain is the place of divine revelation and we are told the disciples came and proskuneo vocabulary that we are familiar with they prostrated they recognized the divinity of jesus but some doubted some doubted even at this moment sisters and brothers this is a real challenge a disciple believer is caught between faith and doubt and i think that's a good news for us and till the end of our lives we are challenged between these two realities of faith and doubt and that's the paradigm of discipleship and in this last message there is the past event there is a present command and the future promise all authority of jesus is given and he sends them on a mission go go baptize in the trinitarian formula of the father son and the holy spirit remember at the baptism of jesus there was the father the son and the holy spirit now the baptism takes place in the trinitarian formula and notice the statement of all there is a sense of fullness of power mission teaching time space all authority in heaven go therefore make disciples of all nations and teaching them everything that i have commanded 
this is the duty of the reader to actualize the real teaching of Jesus that we have read in the 28 chapters of Matthew. We are now concluding this study, this journey with Matthew discovering Jesus through the pages of the account that Matthew gave us. And it has been a challenge for me to condense uh, each chapter around in 10 minutes. And uh, my experience has been really overwhelming and uh, humbling because uh, several of you inquired about, asked for clarification and uh, I know how many of you have spent time reading, preparing, questioning, clarifying your doubts. And I would like to thank you for participating and accepting this challenge. And I would like to thank two people. One is uh, Brother Dixon who mooted this idea and convinced me to begin this uh, series at a very short notice. And there is uh, Brother Chito who spent several hours in recording, editing and uploading. And I would like to ask your blessing on them as they prepare themselves for their priesthood. It's a pilgrimage that we have taken together and we are all pilgrims. And as we conclude, let us seek God's blessing. May the peace of the risen Christ and the love of God our Father and the ever-abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.